Hi there, hope everyone had a very Merry Christmas. And now for our five stories in five minutes or less. As always, links in the description box. Story number one. No time like the present for Pope Francis to seize the opportunity to go against President Trump. Quote, Let us pray that the will to resume dialogue may prevail between the parties and that the negotiated solution can finally be reached, one that will allow for the peaceful coexistence of two states within mutually agreed and internationally recognized borders, he says, referring to the Israelis and the Palestinians. This was the second time that the Pope has spoken out publicly about Jerusalem since Trump's decision on December the 6th. That day, Francis called for the city's status quo to be respected. I always feel like I've made a good choice in going with Trump, and when the Pope goes against him, I really do. Story number two. The Senate Rules and Appropriations Committee releases the OCC harassment settlement data on December the 21st. Don't know if you had an opportunity to look over this breakdown of our hard-earned tax dollars being spent, but just in case you do, the breakdown's right here for you. What a waste. I think we should get this money back. And story number three. So many people probably already know that the Julian Assange's Twitter account briefly vanished on the Christmas Eve, and then it reappeared today. Well, what I find most interesting about this is how the U.S. Navy office had been involved. The U.S. Navy was inadvertently roped into this confusion early Monday morning as the Navy sent out a tweet from its official Twitter account with Assange's full name in quotes, and then somehow this led to it trending on Twitter. Now we must ask ourselves, how is the U.S. Navy Office of Information's digital media engagement team causing trending of Julian Assange to be going over Twitter? Story number four. Uranium Gate had a secret witness that came forward back in November. This person, as you can imagine, um, and his name is William D. Campbell, was undercover for six years. He was an agent undercover for six years, but he came forward because he was going to testify. Well, William D. Campbell a Russian insider who was due to testify on a Senate committee on Monday that Hillary Clinton accepted bribes in the uranium scandal has gone into hiding. This was as of the 20th of November because he had already survived at least one attempt on his life. Apparently, he had to pull his pistol out because somebody was tracking him in the forest. We haven't heard anything from Mr. Campbell since the 29th. I wonder, where could he be? And story number five, here we have Mr. Comey, former FBI director, and his Twitter, oh, Twitter, 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 says FBI officials being attacked for partisan gain. If Comey isn't the pot calling the kettle black, I don't know who is. The former FBI director, James Comey, is accusing the current FBI leadership of bowing to political pressure by reassigning the FBI's top lawyer. Of course, anybody following this case knows how absurd his comments are, particularly in light of how he came to the defense of Miss Clinton, who he had obviously absolutely no problem putting a list out of all of her afflictions, but then saying that no reasonable attorney would ever prosecute. Thank you. I'm sure I'll be posting another video or two before the end of the year, but I just must say I know I speak for well more than myself, if not for most of the sane people in the world who are looking forward to an upcoming year where these swamp creatures will be drained and appropriately placed. Bring on 2018.